What is up guys, Rick Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be going over all of the different Iron Banner weapons within Destiny 2 that are available to get right now and every time Iron Banner is active. Showcasing the different stats and perks they come with, discussing their PvE and PvP god rolls so that you guys know what to go after. Now there's a lot of Iron Iron Banner weapons available to earn, but we're going over them in reverse chronological order, with the two brand new Season of Opulence Iron Banner weapons, then the two from Season of the Drifter, then Season of the Forge, and finally all of the Forsaken weapons. So if you're a new player, stick around for the whole thing, you'll learn a ton. If you just want to see the new ones, by all means watch those and then yeet. But let's get started right here with the Ganora's Axe. This was a year one shotgun being brought up into the random roll capabilities with Season of Opulence and taking a look at the stats here, this is a pretty impressive weapon. Now, this actually belongs to its own somewhat unique archetype because it is a Suros precision frame shotgun, which means fires a single slug round, this weapon's recoil pattern is more predictably vertical. And stats wise, it's a very impressive weapon. It actually has two more starting range than the Dust Rock Blues, known for its incredible starting range, but it is going to be less forgiving, again because of that single slug round instead of pellets. Now the rest of its stats aren't slacking either, in fact they look great when compared to its one competitor, the Good Bone Structure, the only other Suros Precision shotgun that can get random rolls. In fact, let's take a look at this weapon's rolls. The curated one is actually pretty darn decent, with accurized rounds, it's also got Outlaw and Opening Shot, quite the wombo combo for a weapon you're trying to get precision headshots with. Opening Shot I think is an extremely good perk. And now let's talk about those random perk rolls. So again, a lot of very good things for PvP. You do get some of the better perks out there. Barrel wise, you don't actually necessarily need something to tighten the spread because you only have that one slug. So you can just go for maximum range or whatever stat you really want. And then we do have accurized rounds, which is pretty much the go to for shotguns. After that, we've got several very good perks. Quick draw is phenomenal with shotguns. Full auto trigger system can be great for a faster follow-up shot. Outlaw, as I've said, is actually pretty decent. Then we've got just a smorgasbord of great perks. Rampage is very good. Triple take is actually not even going to be that bad. Snapshot sights, you can have the quick draw snapshot wombo combo for just a really snappy responsive shotgun roll. Slide shot is great as well to extend the range when sliding. Opening shot, as I've said, that first shot extending the range, very, very good. We've also got two of the new Season of the Drifter perks with Demolitionist and Swashbuckler, both decent but Swashbuckler being the better one. So we've just got a lot of extremely good rolls here. PvP wise, I think that's where this gun is going to excel. It's kind of like a build your own chaperone exotic but in the legendary slot. Now if you do want to get a PvE roll, something like full auto plus rampage, full auto plus swashbuckler could be very good as well. But it is time to move on to the next brand new Iron Banner weapon, and that is the Shining Sphere Legendary Rocket Launcher. Now, this is a Soros Rocket Launcher, and unfortunately, these are not that impressive. Looking at the stats, it's nearly identical to its competition, the Husko Season of the Forge Soros Rocket Launcher, and when we look at the stats here, Things don't necessarily get better, but there are some interesting roles. The curated role is actually snapshot sights plus quick draw. So you can get that wombo combo, but for a rocket launcher, that's not really what you're looking for. Now, as for the rest of the random perk roles, you can get some decent perks. Impact casing, I really enjoy for PvE. You can get tracking, which is very good. And for PvP, you can actually get the wombo combo of snapshot sights 
plus tracking. That's just going to let you lock on faster than normal because you're aiming down sights quicker than normal and it just makes it so that you can potentially get your shot off faster than other people without snapshot sights and but also have tracking. Now there is the presence of one of the new perks Demolitionist and I do envision a role with every single weapon in your kinetic energy and heavy slot with this having access to demolitionist for like a mega grenade like fun build but aside from that i don't really think this weapon is worth going after all right now moving on from there we have the season of the drifter iron banner weapons which are still available to earn Firstly, we have the Wizened Rebuke Legendary Fusion Rifle. Taking a look at the stats here, this belongs to the highest impact archetype for fusion rifles. So it's going to be outputting a lot of damage, it's going to have pretty sizable range, but stability, handling, reload speed, all of those are pretty bad. This is kind of like a one punch weapon, you want to make that round count. Looking at the perks here, the curated roll is all right. Moving target, I'm not a massive fan of. Increased movement speed and target acquisition while aiming down sights. You can like strafe left to right faster while you're using this weapon. It can make you harder to hit. But there is Demolitionist, which I am a fan of. Getting kills, recharge your grenades. And then looking at the rest of the randomized perks, we do have actually some good options. Backup plan is very good for PvP, allowing you to switch this weapon and drastically increase the charge rate, which you need with this archetype. We also do have tap the trigger to improve the range, essentially, of this. It makes the spread a little bit uh, easier to control, actually. Range finder to just outright increase the range of this weapon. We also have in the first category, um, under pressure, which could be okay. Firmly plant planted is all right as well. Like, there's actually not a lot of perks I like in that first perk category. The second perk category, there is some good options. So, in my opinion, this is an overall okay weapon at best. If you do enjoy this archetype, however, there are some interesting things to go after, especially with the capability to get Backup Plan and Demolitionist. Moving on from there, we have the Orwig's Mall Legendary Grenade Launchers. Now, grenade launchers have really come into favor recently. They were the recipients of some massive buffs for PvE. So, how does this weapon fare? Well, looking at the stats here, they are actually pretty darn similar to its competition, the Malicious Birthright. However, the Orwig's Mall is actually the only energy special grenade launcher in the game that gets random rolls. The other two, the Birthright and then the Mountaintop, are both kinetic. So that's a huge factor in this weapon's favor. And looking at the perks here, we can basically have a couple of really good options. Now, PvP-wise, I would ignore uh, the curated roll. It's kind of trash, in my opinion. But for PvP-wise, looking at the random rolls, proximity grenades, so they detonate in proximity, you don't have to get a direct impact, can be very, very good. If you're looking to use grenade launchers in PvP, like that's kind of exactly what you're looking for. We also have the presence of quick draw, which is quite good. And we do have rangefinder, we do have snapshot sights, and demolitionist. All three of those are pretty decent. However, in PvE, we also have some really good options. Firstly, spike grenades to increase damage for direct hits. This is kind of what makes the mountaintop so good at DPS. This can kind of be a build-your-own mountaintop for PvE players who don't want to grind through that sludge fest of a quest. So, spike grenades combined with field prep for more ammunition reserves and then like something like even auto-loading holster, demolitionist, snapshot sights, rangefinder, all of that would be totally fine. You're mainly going for spike grenades plus field prep, and that could actually be a very powerful PvE roll. But it is time to move on from there to the Season of the Forge Iron Banner weapons. Firstly, with the Hero's Burden Legendary Energy Submachine Gun. This, looking at the stats, is a 900 rounds per minute SMG. This is extremely common. 
And stats-wise, the claim to fame for the hero's burden is that it has excellent starting range at 49. Now, for some comparison, the Callus Mini Tool, which has actually been a weapon that a lot of people enjoy using, that has a starting range of 37, like way, way less. So you can kind of map people with the hero's burden. You can engage them at ranges they're not expecting a 900 RPM SMG to be able to engage them at. Now, moving on from there, we have the perk. Security role is decent with moving target and kill clip. I like kill clip quite a bit, but the rest of the random perks, we do have some interesting options. So we do have things like high caliber rounds, excellent in PvP. We've also got Slideways, which definitely isn't bad. We have Zen Moment and Under Pressure to help control the recoil, Snapshot Sights for a more responsive role. Now in the final category, we have Kill Clip. Again, I really like that. Dynamic Sway Reduction to again reduce that recoil as well as tap the trigger. There's actually quite a lot of decent options here. For PvE, you're really going for Kill Clip to increase the damage. Otherwise, it kind of just gets left behind compared to other weapons. Kill Clip isn't bad in PvE though, however, but in PvP, you're definitely going for High Cal, plus something like a Zen Moment, Slideways, Under Pressure, and then you have kind of a smorgasbord of options after that. Really, you're looking for high caliber rounds as your main thing in PvP. But yeah, decent weapon all around actually. Moving on from there, we have the Kremil's Dagger Legendary Kinetic Hand Cannon. Now, looking at the stats here, this belongs to the highest damaging but slowest shooting hand cannon archetype. Now, this archetype has fallen out of favor if it ever was in favor disappointingly. Now, yeah, this thing just does not have a place in the PvE or PvP meta. However, however, some people out there have found success with this archetype. Some people enjoy it. And if you do, this is actually a decent option. It's actually one of the better high impact hand cannons out there. However, a very common weapon, the Duke Mark 44, beats it in range, stability, handling, and reload speed. The Kremil's Dagger only has slightly better aim assist and recoil direction. So, yeah, it's near the top of the pack, but not actually the best stats wise. Now, looking at the perks, if you want that curated roll, it is like mega ultimate range with rangefinder and opening shot. But the rest of the random perks, we do actually have some decent options out there. Now, for PvP, you can find some alright rolls like. Outlaw is actually pretty decent. Snapshot sights to make it a lot more responsive. If you do get kill clip, like this archetype is capable with kill clip of like two banging people. So that's something to keep in mind. But in PvE, we actually have some reasonable options either. Zen moment to calm down that terrible stability. Uh, kill clip is great, especially again, if you're doing this much damage as is outlaw and triple tap can actually come up and actually matters when each round is so powerful. So there's some okay options out there again for people who already enjoy this archetype, but this isn't the type of gun that's so good. It's going to make people come into this archetype if they weren't previously liking it. Okay, so moving on from there, we get into the Forsaken Iron Banner weapons, which again are still available. And firstly, we have the Swarm of the Raven Legendary Grenade Launcher. This weapon is going to basically become one of the most desirable weapons out there. Why? Because it's capable of the highest damage output of pretty much any other weapon. Now, how is this? How is this random iron banner weapon become so desirable all of a sudden? Well, again, it's because those recent grenade launcher buffs, and this is a grenade launcher. Looking at the stats here, it's actually like kind of average. Importantly, it belongs to the 150 rounds per minute archetype, and it deals void damage, which means it works incredibly well with the tractor cannon, which boosts void damage by 50%. Looking at the perks here, the curated roll is actually all right for PvP. You get proximity grenades and quick draw, but we're not interested in that. If you're looking for that PvE fabled god roll, we gotta look at the rest of the random rolls. And here, we're specifically looking for 
spike grenades. Spike grenades to increase the damage on a direct hit combined with probably field prep for more reserves is your best option then you know rampage would be great as well you know, any of these it really doesn't matter it's that combination mainly of spike grenades with hopefully field prep to get that outrageous damage output and after that, we have the Talons of the Eagle Legendary Kinetic Scout Rifle. This belongs to the highest impact archetype for scouts. And unfortunately, looking at the stats here, I mean, it pretty much falls in line with other weapons of this archetype. And then looking at the perks, I mean, the sad thing is that there's a lot of actually very good perks present. I mean, Outlaw plus Rampage is actually for the curated role, really really good and in fact it's so good this could be a decent option to use in pve especially but unfortunately scout rifles just aren't a part of the meta right now and this archetype of scout rifles especially isn't part of the meta looking at the rest of the random rolls again we have some actually pretty decent options full auto trigger system i like quite a bit a steady rounds to improve the terrible starting stability of this archetype Rampage is always a great option. Explosive payload isn't bad either. So yeah, you can put together something, again, like that curated roll or full auto plus Rampage or even full auto plus Ambitious Assassin wouldn't be bad either and have a decent scout on your hands. The problem is that a decent scout just isn't as good as a decent hand cannon, for example, in both PvP or PvE. With that being said, having a decent roll doesn't hurt if a scout rifle buff eventually arises. I mean, the people who are stocking up on Swarm of the Ravens are laughing now. Moving on from there, we have the Bite of the Fox Legendary Kinetic Snipe Rifle. Taking a look at the stats here, this belongs to the highest damaging, slowest shooting damage archetype. Stats wise, pretty in line with the rest of the snipers and perks wise, we actually do have some decent options. The curated role is actually pretty darn decent for PvP. Snapshot Sights is excellent with snipers and extended mag to increase the magazine from 3 to 4, which definitely can matter, especially if you're running with Sniper Scavenger. Looking at the rest of the different random perk rolls, we do have, again, Snapshot Sights is active, that is fantastic. Rampage can actually be decent. Field prep for PvE comes up, but we don't have fourth times the charm or anything super fantastic for PvE. So this is definitely going to be more of a PvP weapon if you like it. But something like Snapshot Sights and Moving Target actually wouldn't be a terrible role either. So this weapon, if you do like this archetype, it packs definitely more of a punch than any other archetype in the game. This is decent, but the beloved Menagerie Sniper is so darn good and has such incredible perks on it that I think it's just going to overshadow this weapon. Moving on from there, we have a very interesting one, the Claws of the Wolf Legendary Energy Pulse Rifle. This belongs to the opposite of what we've seen recently, actually. This belongs to the lowest damage, highest rate of fire pulse rifle archetype. So, looking at the stats here, we see, for frankly, terrible stats all around. I don't know why Blast Radius is on this. Ignore that. But range, stability, handling reload speed, none of that is that great for this weapon. And compared with its competitors, which are the Outlast from Season of the Drifter and the Horror's Leash uh, from the Corrupted Nightfall, it's pretty middle of the road. Like stability-wise, both of those guns beat it, but it has a little bit more range than the Outlast. It's actually pretty comparable to the Outlast, but the uh, Horror's Leash has much better starting stability. But this is potentially going to be way easier to get than those other two weapons. Like the Outlast is an absolute grind fest and so is the Horror's Leash. So if you like that archetype, the fastest shooting pulse rifle archetype, which can actually down people in the crucible pretty darn fast, this may be your easiest option to get. That doesn't require a ridiculous amount of farming. Looking at the rolls here, we do have some decent options. The curated roll is actually quite good with full auto trigger system and outlaw. I love full auto trigger system on this archetype. You need to be making the absolute most of your rate of fire and full auto makes it fire faster than any person can make it fire. And then the other perks are actually pretty decent as well. 
Outlaw is again great because the reload speed on this weapon kind of sucks. Headseeker is going to increase your consistency quite a bit. Snapshot Sights is, as always, pretty decent. It does have access to high caliber rounds to increase flinch in PvP, but honestly, you may want something like Ricochet Rounds to calm down its recoil. The stability isn't great. If it comes with a stability masterwork, that's going to be fantastic. In the final perk slot, unfortunately, full auto trigger system is here, and I think that's by far the best option. But there's some pretty decent constellation prizes with Kill Clip and Rampage both being here, both decent in PvP and PvE. Seriously, the Claws of the Wolf is actually a pretty decent option if you get a good roll and, in my opinion, the stability masterwork. Now moving on from there, we have the Breath of the Dragon Legendary Energy Submachine Gun. This also belongs to the 900 rounds per minute archetype, and stats-wise, it's all right. That's basically it. It's all right. It has decent starting stability, but as you can see with that range, like it's nowhere near the hero's burden. Like the hero's burden is just better than this weapon, honestly. And uh, yeah, it belongs to the same archetype and everything. Moving on to the perks, however, there is some pretty good options. The curated role is actually the wombo combo of Outlaw and Kill Clip. So Outlaw giving you faster reload if you get a precision kill. Kill clip, obviously, you get that precision kill, you reload, you get access to that higher damaging magazine so much quicker. But the rest of the random perks, we have Snapshot Sights and Zen Moment and Under Pressure, which are all decent slideways as well. Pretty much somewhat of the same stuff we went over with the Hero's Burden. In that final perk category, Dynamic Sway Reduction, Kill Clip, Tap the Trigger, Rampage this time, uh, and High Impact Reserves. Uh, high Impact Reserves is all right. So Rampage, Kill Clip, both present and some other great options as well. But stats wise, Hero's Burden's better. Basically all around wise, Hero's Burden's better. But moving on from there, the last weapon we're going over today is the Roar of the Bear Legendary Rocket Launcher. Now, this weapon actually has some pretty outrageous stats in the fact that it has an absolutely massive blast radius. At like just massive kind of trash velocity so that's going to be the stat you're trying to increase now looking at the perks here the curated roll kind of trash i wouldn't go for but the random rolls there's actually some good options here firstly it can get tracking now tracking with a blast radius this big is actually pretty decent especially in pvp like the blast radius is absurd with this weapon now you can combine that with some interesting stuff mainly if you are going for a pvp roll quick draw so just quick draw right into tracking is actually not that bad and kill clip for pve potentially is not bad either range finder is actually going to increase the velocity so tracking plus rangefinder ain't that bad in PvP either. There's some actually pretty decent roles going on here, but it's going to be overshadowed by the brand new Truth Exotic and the old favorite, the Wardcliffe Coil. However, if you want to use your exotic slot somewhere else, the Roar of the Bear is actually a fairly reasonable option. And guys, that is it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed, found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.